Hello and welcome to the fourth lecture of week four of the Open University's MOOC on Genocide. We continue our discussion on the murder of the gypsies by Nazi Germany during World War II. In today's lecture, we'll go straight to the 1930s, the era of the Nazi regime, and together try to understand how all the topics we discussed in the last three lectures are connected to the situation in Germany and the attitude towards the gypsies. More specifically, it seems there is no major change in the way Nazi Germany treats the gypsies compared to the past, and yet we are about to see how starting 1936, more or less, the treatment of the gypsies start starts deteriorating. This change for the worse will culminate in 1943 when it is decided to send the Sinti, the gypsies of Germany, to Auschwitz. During the time of the German Empire from 1871 to its collapse at the end of World War I, and even after that, during the Weimar Republic, that's how we call the German democracy, between the end of World War I and 1933, when Hitler takes power, the attitude towards gypsies is not positive at all. Actually, when Germany becomes a united country under a central government, the state's treatment of the gypsies is rather negative. For example, among other things, we see that in the early 20th century, the German Reich sets up an office to monitor the gypsy population across the West German Empire. This office was originally opened in Bavaria, one of the kingdoms that united under the German Empire. The objective of this office was to collect fingerprints from every gypsy wandering in the Reich, making it easier to solve crimes this is obviously based on the assumption that all gypsies are criminals and that most crimes are committed by gypsies. That thought is a bit sick, but I pointed out to demonstrate how the German Empire and the German democracy, up until Hitler's rise to power, were not necessarily so democratic and positive towards the gypsy population in the midst. In that sense, the Nazis' rise to power in 1933 doesn't dramatically tip the scale. Occasionally, under the German Empire, we see cases where gypsies are obligated to carry wandering permits or have trouble renewing their annual wandering permits. But in the early years of the Nazi regime, there is an indifference towards the gypsies living in the Third German Reich. This changes a bit in 1936, when a new office is opened in Berlin, called the Office of Racial Hygiene led by a, psychi a psychiatrist, a scientist named Dr. Robert Ritter. Dr. Ritter deals with the issues of racial terminology in the German population. His research is about racism and he's specially obsessed with the gypsies. He's well aware of all those theories I told you about in the last lecture regarding the Aryan myth and the fact that the gypsies originate in India and are therefore part of the Aryan race. However, the same Dr. Rita rules, based on scientifically questionable studies, that only a small part of the Sinti, the German gypsies, are actually pure blood, or pure Aryan blood, while the vast majority of them are mixed. Now, I'm not sure if you realize the gravity and importance attributed in Nazi Germany to purity of blood compared to mixed races. This is of major significance. Once Ritter, the scientist who holds studies on the German gypsies, rules that most of them are Mischlinge, that is, of mixed races, he basically states a fact that will have huge implications within a few years when the decision is made to exterminate the Sinti, or at least those of them who aren't pure blood, in 1943. In Germany, between 1933 and 1939, before World War II breaks out, the Nazis are obsessed with perfecting German society and, if you will, human society in general. We won't elaborate on this issue because that takes too much time, but I would like to note the fact that genetic research in Nazi Germany was pretty advanced for its time and yet full of delusional racial theories while any kind of racism is unacceptable in modern day science. This Nazi combination of faith in modernity and science being total atheist while romanticizing and relishing totally fabricated mythology. 
The racist ideas that guided them were a singular combination that's hard to contain. Understanding it requires quite a lot of reading. In the scientific, progressive and modernist context, the Nazi Germany tried to lead an effort of perfecting German society in the 1930s. According to their view, to put it plainly, humanity in general and German society in particular consists of different groups of people with innate genetic qualities. While most of the population is born functional and acts in constant effort to improve society, there is a parallel group in society the Nazis call asocial groups or antisocial groups. That is, they harm society. The innate genetic defects of these groups prevent them from improving and correcting themselves. In fact, the mere existence of these groups holds the silent contributing majority back and prevents the engineers of German society, if you will, from perfecting it. These groups include the mentally ill, homosexuals, criminals and prostitutes, those who sleep and therefore the line of work they choose suggests something is genetically wrong with them, and other groups, including the gypsies eventually. I told you in one of the previous lectures this week that the pilot tried by some German states back in the 19th century to integrate the gypsies into society had failed. The German disappointment from the gypsies' reluctance to Germanize and become modern Germans while giving up their culture and traditions eventually nurtures the image of gypsies among some social planners and engineers in Nazi Germany as suffering from an innate defect, a flow preventing them from making progress towards the wonderful modern world offered by the Third Reich to its iron sons and daughters. This creates a conflict during the 1930s regarding the gypsy question. Some of them are pure blood Aryans. We can't just think of solutions like castration, which the Nazis liked applying to our social groups, like the mentally retarded, the mentally ill, homosexuals, etc. This question is debated among various professionals and eventually this Dr. Rita, the head of the Office of Racial Hygiene in Berlin, decides to castrate a few thousand German Sinti gypsies in the late 1930s, but leaves a large portion of them untouched. In 1939, World War II breaks out, as we know, and all draft eligible gypsy men in Nazi Germany, which as of 1938 includes not only Germany, but also Austria, after the Anschluss, the unification Hitler forces on its neighbor, which is actually his homeland, about 40,000 German Sinti gypsies living within this Feld Reich, along with other 10,000 gypsies classified as Roma, that is nomads without German citizenship who aren't considered originally Sinti. All draft eligible men of this population are enlisted to the Wehrmacht, the German army, which indicates that in 1939 there is no intention of exterminating the gypsies and committing genocide against them. I hope you agree with me that had there been an intention, they wouldn't even consider enlisting all the gypsies under a general draft, as if they were full German citizens of the Third Reich. This obviously would never happen with Jewish men, although occasionally a man with one Jewish grandparent would be enlisted. But there were very few of them. However, all draft eligible Sinti men are enlisted to the army as full Nazi German citizens. These gypsies serve in the Wehrmacht, the German army, for four years, between 1939 and 1943. Some of them fight in the Russian front. Some are awarded citations for their bravery in combat, and some are treated negatively as inferiors. But all in all, they are part of the war effort and their enlistment to the army strongly suggests that there is no general plan to exterminate the gypsies, no premeditation or intention, surely not officially. Nazi Germany is the country of a single ruler, the Führer, Adolf Hitler. He calls the shots. Hitler wasn't at all interested in exterminating the gypsies. He simply didn't care about them. Period. You can trust me on this one. 
There are all kinds of explanations for this, primarily the fact that a total of 40,000 gypsies lived in Germany. This was a small group of people who didn't really bother anyone and didn't have any wealth to steal, unlike the half a million Jews living in the Third Reich in 1939, who had a lot to steal from. That Hitler simply didn't care about the gypsies is very telling and indicates that if Hitler wasn't concerned with this, it means there was probably no organized intention or plan for genocide against the gypsies. Then why were the gypsies considered worthy of slaughter by 1943? Why was the blood fair game? Why was it the decision made in 1943 to send half of the German Sinti to Auschwitz, including all the soldiers serving in the army who were released at once in 1943 and joined by the families, children and parents they left behind at home in Germany? Why does all this happen? To find out, you'll have to wait patiently for the next and final lecture of this week. Thank you for now and goodbye.